go further in depth than we get to on a Sunday morning during a sermon. So you are welcome to join us Wednesdays at 1030 for the Sermon Club. We have adult Sunday school and youth Sunday school that meets at 9.30 most Sundays. So starting next week, you can join whether you're a younger youth, older youth, or an adult. The adult class will be leading a study on the book of Acts coming up. So if you want to know more about the Acts of the Apostles, join the adult Sunday school class um, at 9.30 on Sunday morning. Any other announcements this morning? Nancy. Okay. All right, so if you want to purchase one of our Easter plants... The geraniums are inside only, but the lilies and other plants can be planted outside. Those are $11, and just make the check out to the church. Other announcements? Yes. And there are three lilies out in the foyer as well. How about prayer concerns this morning? Vicki asked prayers for her sister Paula, who's not doing well and is in the hospital, so keep Paula in your prayers as she struggles in this fight against cancer. Any other joys or concerns? Nancy? Oh, so Eloise has temperature and sore throat, so we'll keep Eloise in our prayers. Other joys or concerns? All right, seeing none, let's invite our handbell choir to offer the prelude.
Please stand if you're able. Please join me in a call of worship. This is the day when healing touches the suffering, when loneliness discovers a family, when peace caresses distress. This is the day of the Lord. Rolls away the stone, falls the grave, flows into a neat pile. This is the day the Lord has made. The sin defeats resurrection, the first day of the new creation. This is the day. Christ is risen. Hallelujah.
please join me in a confession of sin? This morning, wonderful God, in the company of your church, saints and sinners, we gather to celebrate your life, your ministry, your death and resurrection, your great love for us. Yet we know we often leave the celebration here in the sanctuary as we go back to our homes, our jobs, our years, our doubts, our lives. Bring us new life, God of the living, where we are tried and stressed. Transform our hardened hearts into fountains of love. Forgive us the hurts and harms we have caused. Fill us with the joy of your Holy Spirit in the hollows of our souls. The good news is that God forgives us. Forgive others and forgive yourselves. Thanks be to God. seated. The first reading from Matthew 28, 1 through 10, the resurrection of Jesus. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was drawing or dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said, Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly and with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to him, said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. They, there they will see me. This ends the first reading. Ring ye bells of Easter morning, ring ye bells of Easter day. Tell the world that Christ is risen, Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Ring ye bells of Easter morning. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia.
Dr. Mitchell in the choir. Our second reading comes from Psalm 118, verses 19 to 24. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, open our ears to hear you. Open our minds to know you. Open our mouths to praise you, open our hearts to love you, and open our lives to serve you. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The resurrection is the core of our faith. We focus much about the saving death on the cross how it tore down the wall that separated us from God and made us all worthy to come into God's presence. But if there were no resurrection, we wouldn't be here. The Apostle Paul wrote the following. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. But in fact, Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then it is coming those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Christ's resurrection is a pivotal moment in the history of the world. He is the second Adam. He brings new life. The first Adam was the one who introduced sin and death. Before the fall, though, it was absolute paradise. But Adam and Eve disobeyed God, who told them not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We refer to it as original sin. As humans, we are predisposed to disobey God, to do what we want, to feed our own desires, only to find death and nothing more. But Christ reversed all that. He came and hung on a tree, encouraging us to eat of his flesh and blood so that we could be made right with God and find life. Further, his resurrection is the first fruits of our own. We are promised that as he was raised, so too would we be raised with him. And eventually he will come to establish his kingdom, defeat all his enemies, the last one being death. 
Because of his resurrection, we are assured of the promise of eternal life. That one day we will meet our maker and enjoy a life of absolute joy. Easter puts us in a position to ask, whose side are we on? Are we on Adam's side and choose a life of sin and death? Or are we on Christ's side and choose a life of obedience and joy. This is a decision we face every day, not just on Easter. Are we truly a follower of Christ? Do we truly choose to live in him? Then we are to be feeding the hungry, welcoming the stranger, loving our neighbor as ourselves. The resurrection is the penultimate moment in our lives and the life of this world. Because what the world needs most is hope. Everything seems hopeless. We are at political odds. Our students are terrified in their own schools. The poor are getting poorer while the rich get richer. Justice is not done for all. The COVID virus is still out there. Wars rage in various parts of the world. And people cry out in their misery, why? Why doesn't God do something? Well, on that first day of the week so long ago, God did do something. God raised Jesus from the dead. The death-dealing world does not have the final say. Christ has power over the grave. Whatever hole we dig ourselves into, God can get us out of it. And we are digging our, ourselves a hole. The divisiveness has got to end. Poverty has got to end. The homeless need shelter. Our students need safety. Everyone needs to feel safe in their own skin. The resurrection tells us that everyone matters. Jesus said, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. You matter because you matter to God. God proves his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died for us not because we were perfect, but because we were sinners who needed him. The resurrection reminds us of how much we need God. The grip sin has on our lives is so severe that we cannot cope with it on our own. Left to our own devices, we are selfish egotistical, spiteful, and bratty. There are people who go about their own business unaffected by conscience. They infringe on the rights of others. They dictate their will upon others. They legislate on behalf of special interests. They don't care what others think. They're always right and will strip you of your own rights. Then there are those of us to whom our conscience matters. We have a conscience because there is more of Christ than Adam in us. As a result, we have a responsibility to bring life into this world of death. The empty tomb is a reminder that not all is ever lost. That even when things seem bleak, there is hope on the horizon. Even though the resurrection is such a big deal, Matthew only dedicates 10 verses as to what happened that Easter morning. The women had come to the tomb expecting death. They had been with Jesus a long time. Though we don't know much about the other Mary, Mary Magdalene had suffered from the possession of seven demons, which Jesus drove out from her, 
giving her her life back. Ever since she had followed as one of Jesus' disciples and supported his ministry. Both women had seen Jesus crucified. They had watched as Joseph laid him in the tomb and rolled the stone over the entrance. Then they waited a very long Sabbath before going to pay their respects. In Matthew's version, we aren't told why they go. In another version, they have spices to anoint Jesus' body. Still, they had come expecting to visit the dead. But then there was an earthquake. The stone was rolled away, and they were met by an angel who told them, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Unique to Matthew, though, there were other witnesses to this event. The guards, who because of the angel shook and became like dead men. In the passage that follows, we read, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers telling them, you must say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. The women, though, were charged to tell the truth. They were told to go to the disciples And tell them he has been risen. Indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. They obeyed. And while they were on their way, they met Jesus. Kyrete, he said to them. Which our Bible translates as greetings. But can also be translated as rejoice or be glad. Indeed, this captures what the women must have been feeling in that moment. They rushed to him, grabbed his feet, and rejoiced as they worshipped him. And he told them to continue on their way and do as the angel had told them. They were the first evangelists, and they remind us of our primary responsibilities as Christians to rejoice and be glad, to tell others what we have seen and heard, to tell others that Christ is surely risen. To the Philippians, Paul wrote, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. And today we rejoice because Christ is alive. In his Pentecost address to the crowd, Peter said that Christ had been crucified, but God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held by its power. It was impossible for death to hold him down. And we have the same power at work in us, so there is nothing that can hold us down. Sickness, depression, desperation, loneliness, economic hardship, doubt. The resurrection assures us that if death couldn't hold Jesus, then nothing can hold us back. We are an Easter people. We can rejoice in all circumstances because God raised Jesus from the dead. To the Romans, Paul wrote, the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. 
Jesus died to sin, but he lives for God. Thus, we must die to sin so that we can be alive to God in Jesus Christ. We aren't the children of Adam. We are the brothers and sisters of Christ. By his resurrection, we have the power to live beyond sin and death and live by grace and life. The table around which we gather today is a reminder of Christ's sacrifice. He tells us that this is his body given for you. That this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood. Often we just focus on the cross when we hear these words. And the cross is important, but it would be nothing if Christ hadn't risen from the dead. This is not just a remembrance of a brutal death at the hands of the state. This is a celebration of the resurrection. For in flesh and blood, Jesus rose from the dead, appearing to the women first and then to the disciples. Here we feast with him in his kingdom's banquet hall. Isaiah said on this mountain, the Lord of hosts, will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. On Golgotha, he was crucified. In the garden, he was raised. And on the mountain, we feast with him. And so I say to you, friends, Kyrete. Rejoice and be glad, for Christ is risen. Death could not hold him. Human hatred could not defeat him. Love prevailed. Hope prevailed. And life went on, and it goes on eternally. Amen.
affirmation of faith which comes from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Even the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The God of early mornings be with you. People of the first day, lift up your hearts. People of Easter joy, give thanks to the one who is your salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, you created us to be your people. At times we have proved faithful, at others we have proved faithless. Your people walked with you through the wilderness. You led them by a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. You gave them water from a rock You gave them manna from heaven. And yet still they disobeyed. They turned their backs to you. They made their golden calves. You gave them commandments upon which to pattern their lives, but they couldn't live up to those commandments. They lied, they cheated, they stole, and they proved unfaithful. You sent them into exile, but all the while you sent your prophets to tell them to return, return to you. After many long years, you delivered them from exile and brought them back home, brought them home to yourself. And yet still we were disobedient and wayward. And so we needed a savior. You sent your son Jesus to be for us the sacrifice that atones for all of our wrongs. You make us at one with God the Father. You bring us in to right standing. You renew our fellowship with one another. Around this table you gather your church and the many members of it but you also gather your saints across the earth and under heaven. Today we share this feast with people throughout the world who are celebrating the resurrection. Even though we remember how you died, we remember how you were raised from the dead and how you live and promise us eternal life. Holy Spirit, anoint the gifts of the earth and of the vine and make them the means by which we embrace your grace in this moment and by which we respond to it with your lives. We pray this through Christ, who with God the Father and Holy Spirit reigns in the glory of the power that is love. Amen. On the night of his betrayal and arrest, Jesus shared a meal with his disciples. And as part of that meal, he took bread. And after giving thanks for it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Take, eat, and do this remembering me. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup. And after giving thanks for it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood. 
poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink and do this remembering me. As often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim Christ's saving death until he comes. Jesus said, my body is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats this bread and drinks from this cup will live in me and I will live in them. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Join me in the prayer after the supper. Gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of this meal, you have opened our hearts and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. Now send us forth from this place by the power of your spirit to tell this good news to the world. The Lord has risen indeed. Amen. May be seated. Creator God, we rejoice that this is the day you have made. You have given us the bright sunshine. You have given us the colorful flowers. You have given us creatures both great and small. You've given us one another and created us to be a community of love. Redeemer God, today we remember your resurrection. We remember how you tore the curtain so that all might have access to God the Father. You sacrificed yourself to save us from our sin, not your own. You refused to save yourself upon the cross, but hung in there for us so that you might die so that we might live. Sustaining God, sanctify us by a Holy Spirit. Renew in us a right heart and a clean spirit. Make us holy as you are holy. Enable us to do the good in the world that you would have us do and to show the love you would have us show. We pray for this church. We welcome our visitors this morning and ask your blessings upon them. We continue to reach out and try to be a mission-minded church as we further your kingdom in our community. We rejoice that we are able to offer tax preparation services and help people get money back in their pockets to invest in the community. We rejoice with our opportunity to partner with hope and alleviating the hunger and the need in our community. We pray for all the churches of New Albany as they gather to celebrate your resurrection today. May theirs be as joyful of a worship as ours. 
May they be one-minded, and may we all come together to share the gospel of Jesus Christ that is welcome for all. We pray for our nation and its leaders. We pray for a bipartisan spirit and a sense of unity as they make decisions on behalf of all their citizens, not just a select few. We pray for those who lead us at the state and local level as well. We pray for all young and old gathered here today. We all come with our doubts. We come with our bumps and bruises. We come blind to parts of our life that we do not want to face. We come tired and weary, and yet we have been filled by your presence. Bring healing to those who are battling serious diseases like cancer. Bring strength to those who are undergoing treatments like chemotherapy and immunotherapy. Be with those who are experiencing homelessness. Be with those who have no families. Be with those who grieve the loss of loved ones that can be hard on holidays such as this. Bless families that gather today to celebrate an Easter feast and be with those who cannot afford to put bread on the table. Be with those facing economic hardship. Be with those who are going through relationship struggles. Be with those who are lonely. Be with those who are dispossessed. Bring justice to the outcast, hope for the hopeless, and love to all our neighbors. I ask that you bring wisdom to the one who has a decision they need to make, courage to the one who is facing a trial, and strength for all of us on this journey of life as we pray peace for the entire world. And now I invite my brothers and sisters in a moment of silence to offer their prayers to you. Give us wisdom to know that your answers come in your way and patience knowing that they come in your time. Hear us as we pray. Holy Spirit, unite our hearts with all the saints on earth and heaven as we stand and sing the prayer that Jesus taught us.
hearts, let us give as we are able as the ushers come forward to collect the offering. Almighty God, you are the giver of all gifts. Take what we are able to offer you this morning and use it to equip, inspire, and challenge your community through the life and mission of this church. We pray this through Christ, the greatest gift of all, and in his name we pray. Amen.
join me in the prayer of the day. Brightness of God's glory and exact image of God's person, whom death could not conquer nor the tomb imprison. As you have shared our frailty in human flesh, help us to share your immortality in the spirit. Let no shadow of the grave terrify us, and no fear of darkness turn our hearts from you. Reveal yourself to us this day and all our days as the first and the last, the living one, our immortal Savior and Lord. Amen. May the light of Christ surround you. May the love of Father God enfold you. May the power of Holy Spirit protect you, and may the presence of God watch over you. And remember, wherever you are, God is, and all will be well. Happy Easter, everyone.